Hello everybody, welcome to Coco's Crochet. I'm Litsa and today is our Super Califragilistic 2024 Roundup for the month of October. It is so exciting to bring you these because I've managed to catch up or keep up each and every month with the cows that I started back in January and I hope to continue to do so for the next two months and then it'll be the end of the year. How crazy is that? Now, a lot of our friends including some of you have joined in the same cows there are so many cows and mouths going around that we just can't keep up with all of them but i did commit to a few and i've added a few more along the way but i just wonder how many of you are doing these i know i ask you each and every time but sometimes you surprise me with something new or you know you just say yes i'm keeping up with these as well so in no order other than you know i've written them down on my um clipboard here and I want to make sure that I get through all of them as I always say there's equal love for each and every one of them I just thought I'd get right into it today because there is a few to show you the first one that I'm going to show you is actually the one that I love the most today only because of where it's going so our friend Erin over at Crafting Kitty she puts on a creator spotlight so each and every month she chooses a creator and then we highlight them celebrate them by creating one of their patterns or more if you wish i always manage to get one which is great now this month it was daisy farm crafts and she has a beautiful channel and i've been looking at you know her patterns for a while she also has them written on her blog or you can have a video tutorial which is very true for the one that i um created this time around which is this one here um, the little boho, oh my gosh, it's so beautiful, boho sundress, a baby sundress. And I did download this from her website, uh, her blog. I did just predominantly use the written instruction, which are very, very well written. But as I say, you can tap into the video tutorial on her YouTube channel if you wish to. I used um, my four millimeter hook for this beautiful little project here and my Flinders, uh, sorry, Brighton cotton blend yarn, which is 50% cotton, 50% acrylic. I did use almost two of the purple. Oh my gosh, what a beautiful color. Um, the same of the white. And I did have this gorgeous green color from our friend Narelle's Treasures which I did talk to you about when I went to um, the sale, the yard sale. Um, that's what we want to call it. Or um, I just remember she had so many beautiful colours, but she only had one of these balls. And it is pretty much the same yarn as these, which I got very lucky because it was just um, a, like a scrap, but almost a complete ball. So I had no ball band. So with this one, I actually have this much left, uh, but I was one row short for the um, little dress. But that's okay. It turned out gorgeous. Are you ready to see it? Because I cannot wait to show it to you. And this is going to my goddaughter for her little baby girl who is coming to us very, very soon. Now, as you can see, it's got a very, very simple pattern of these gorgeous granny squares. You make seven of these. And then you make the body of the dress here and then you add the little um, bodice or the straps and you, you use two little buttons at the back and you also put a, a you do a chain <clears throat> excuse me and you thread it through and you actually gather it together so as the baby grows into a toddler this can actually become a little top so a little um like a baby doll top which i think will be gorgeous so once again there it is just in time because my goddaughter will be having that gorgeous little baby girl of ours in a couple of weeks from now so this is <laughs> smells so delicious i have washed this and it's ready to go and i could not wait to bring it to you and i was thinking i hope she doesn't give birth early because i won't be able to show you the dress silly me okay so that is um the creator spotlight that was for october thank you so much erin for putting this on i'm so excited to start our november project so watch this space and also go and visit Erin. She has a whole playlist. <clears throat> Excuse me. She also showcases everybody's makes if you wish to send them through and there are prizes involved. Um, and I won't announce who the um, November creator is because that's Erin's job, but I will be bringing you something in November. I've already sourced a pattern, which I think I'll be going ahead with. So we can tick that one off our list and I'm very happy to say that I've kept up for October as well. Now, it is early in the morning here, a side 
backtrack for a moment in Sydney, Australia, and I have a bit of a weepy eye because I do have allergies, so excuse me, but I thought I'd best, you know, tape nice and early because it's going to be a very hot, hot, hot day today. Now, up here, it gets very, very hot in the yarn room. Anyway, back on track. So, the Movie Marquee Challenge. Most of you by now would be very familiar with it, and these are our friends. Too much white, right? Let me take it away. So, our friends... So it's hosted by our friends Bella over at Bella's Crochet Gifts, Heather, the Crochet Witch, and Samantha from Amethyst Craftworks. Now, by now, I'm sure you've all visited them, but if you haven't, please go and do so. But each and every month, they draw from four movies that they had each, because there are 12 months in the year, three friends, four choices each. Last month, it was Heather's pick, and she did pick the movie The Stand. Now, this is the poster so the movie poster that I drew inspiration from for my project. There were different um, uh, posters you could choose, but I thought these are the colours that we haven't worked with for a little while. So I was very excited to find that there was a different poster. Now, this month, so October, as we said, was Heather. Next month is Bella's month. So i be making blankets for the whole year. And this is the blanket that I made using those colours. So that's as close as I could get them, but to make them nice and happy as well and bright. So let me hold this up for you side by side. Oh, this is a very heavy blanket, as you can imagine. There we go. I think that I did a pretty good interpretation of that poster. Again, this is so small, so good, and it's so soft, guys. This is made out of blanket yarn, one of my favorite yarns to work with. And here it is here. This is what it looks like, in case you're not sure. It is a bulky weight yarn. Uh, number six I think and you do use your bigger hooks for this and I use my eight millimeter hook you can go up but I thought it'd be nice for a blanket and something that I need to show you which I didn't even write down who it's from but and I can't believe I missed this this was the most exciting part look at this corner guys Shirley inspired me to make this pattern here which is actually uh like a um like a corner to corner but you miss it's almost like a window stitch i think it's called the block stitch for corner to corner and it decorates your blanket so so beautifully now you can do a whole blanket with this stitch it wouldn't be for little people <coughs> excuse me but i thought for a, a bulky yarn like this the blanket yarn there'd be way too many big holes but as for decorating the corners oh my goodness it is so so pretty like i said I'm sorry I almost forgot to say that because that was the highlight of this blanket. Now, I only had two bags of Millens, which is 800 grams of blanket yarn to make this. And I just used the whole thing. So it's not a huge blanket, but it, by, you know, it will be a nice size for a baby. Even to, just to put down on the floor for playtime. So this one is actually going to be donated because all of the blankets that I'm making for the Movie Marquee Challenge are going to donations. And in actual fact, I'm putting this aside for <clears throat> our Winter Appeal Drive. So crocheting for the community 2025. So this is blanket number one towards that. How exciting is that, guys? So I'd like to thank each and every um, lady who's been hosting this cow the movie marquee it's been a lot of fun and i'm so happy that i've been able to keep up and been able to have one more blanket in my donations pile so that has been very very rewarding as well so let's wait and see what next month's movie will be well in actual fact today is the third of november so you know november but today we're talking about october right so the next two are my amigurumi cows, and I'm absolutely loving them. I did have a little bit of a break for a couple of weeks because I was all amigurumied out. But now that I've discovered that a hot glue gun and I are very good friends, I think I'll be making more progress because all the little bits that, you know, take the time to sew on, I'm just gluing them on. So it's been really, really great. So our friend Cassandra over at Craftably Ever After, she decided that she would send this book around the world, Whimsical Stitches by Lauren Espy. And Lauren is following along this, which is amazing. So one book's gone to the USA, one book's international. It eventually is coming to me. I am lucky last on the list. And we get to pick and choose the project that we want to make along the way. I won't be able to pick or choose, but I will be making the very last project in the book, which is kind of exciting as well. And then these books will go back to Cassandra. Now, Cassandra 
she does have a um, her, uh, her blog and she does have the journal um, it's called I think from two something like that don't quote me on the name but she has everybody that's making um, something from this book whether it's one project or all of them she has um, I think it's called from two pages and each like little um, make that you make goes into that section so you can see from all around the world who's participating because it's not just youtubers that are doing that but we do get the you know to highlight ours on you know our channel for you as well which is great now in saying all that for all of mine i've been using my spot saver which is 100 percent acrylic yarn absolutely love this we don't have a huge variety of colors here but enough to get the projects done and again a four millimeter hook predominantly now i am a few projects behind but i have managed to make two in october so the first one was the octopus and here he is here oh, i'll try to hold them up together there he is there i am trying to make them the same colors where i can but sometimes you know you can mix it up just add your own creative license and then the next one which is the eggs now i'd like to make a whole dozen of these but decorate them like i do my easter eggs so the one that i made is the large one and it's not huge at all so here it is here like i said <clears throat> The basic egg but i imagine using different colored yarns and even sticking some gems and things on there to make them look like our easter eggs for orthodox easter that would be awesome so thank you so very very much cassandra for inviting us all to join you it has been a lot of fun i love seeing everybody's makes and i hope i hope that i get to make each and every project i am a couple of behind at least i think i'm i've started making the little pig now so he's next and i think the tulip for the international book has been drawn this week or you know has been chosen this week so i'm hoping to catch up as soon as possible but in saying that that's okay eventually they'll all get done right guys there is no stress or hurry the deadline for the little dress was stress but that's about it now another cow uh a magurumi cow that i'm involved in and i know a lot of you are as well is hosted by our friend sally over at nanny moon's crochet and she's using this crochet donut buddies book which i know a lot of people have i actually bought both these books for the cows and i'm so happy that i have now each and every week sally draws out of her big bag of balls a ball and on that ball it tells us which donut we're to make for that week now the one that i made for october is the triceratops and of course i've labeled the new one that we have to make now so if i don't find him in here that is okay because i'm not going to be wasting your time looking for him in actual fact there is a, <laughs> there is a contents list in the front and a, a smart person would have gone to that straight away so let's have a little look page 42 so this is what he was meant to look like there he is there guys and i made him here so i put goggly eyes on mine because i do not give them to little people look they're shaking all about that's what he looks like on the back and it did turn out all right now everything is glued on except for the piece underneath the frill that was sewn on but there he is there he actually turned out quite large compared to the others I don't think it was the hook size i think it's because of his frill he just looks bigger so he was a lot of fun to make and now i need to make the little alien that's come up next so thank you sally for putting on another fun cow i enjoy watching everybody's um on your channel as well so if you guys want to go and have a look at everybody's makes for both cows if you put in the hashtag amigurumi world tour 2024 for cassandra's playlist and everybody else that has joined in and the hashtag crochet donut cow 2024 for sally's playlist and everybody else that has joined in as well you're going to enjoy many many hours of lots of fun little amigurumi makes now the next one that i love to participate in is the music theory 101 cow which is hosted by neva over at manic mama musings but for some reason we've had a little break from it and that's absolutely fine as long as everybody is well i do miss you know the little album covers and i do miss making the squares but i'm sure eventually we'll, we'll we will catch up now the other cow that i'm involved in obviously and i know a lot of you are so thank you is our cow 
hashtag crochet through the decades cal 2024 october is now um, finished all the entries have come so watch out for the video where we get to vote for everybody's makes i'm so excited about there are, there are so many to choose from it's always very very hard to vote but it is a lot of fun so that's it guys that's october wrapped up as they say it's a wrap it's been a lot of fun keeping up with everything i really do enjoy it and i do endeavor to do the same for november and december so thank you for coming along for the journey i really appreciate all you cheerleaders because once again sometimes when you know you want to share something with someone and there is sort of like a time frame it does give you that little push that you need to get over the line in saying that i'm not feeling any pressure at all as you can see with the amigurumi cows i have fallen a little bit behind but in saying that that's okay that's just life right guys but this little dress i have to tell you oh my goodness it just makes me smile so so much every time i look at it and the reason for the colors if you haven't been following along you know um my life stories in our podcast is because my goddaughter's theme for her little baby girl's room is going to be purple green and white so we thought that we'd add to that because they're her favorite colors so that's it guys I've talked way too much now and you need to get on with your day. I hope you're all keeping well. I certainly am enjoying this weekend. It has been a lot of fun. And until I see you all very, very soon, take care, everyone. Bye-bye for now.